Welcome to The Killing Podcast, Season 2, Episode 5, Ghosts of the Past, because the present isn't disturbing enough. <laughs> All right. We need to now bring in gotta some ghosts Gotta dig up some from stuff the from the past. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> I'm your host, Martha Southgate, and with me is... Rob Southgate. Bust it makes me feel good, because it's ghost Oh, Ghostbusters. Bust. I was thinking more Casper. I was hoping they were friendly ghosts. Oh, yeah, this show? Yeah. I'm sure that's, they'll be... That's likely. They'll be friendly ghosts. Yeah, yeah. So, where do we start here? Oh, we got Darren. We start right with the... Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. Derek, Darren's in his bed at the hospital. He's having a nightmare. Yes, and he's having a nightmare about Belko oh, coming so in and the ghost. shooting him. Okay, there we go. Ghost number one. I don't know. There may be more ghosts. We could keep a tally. Mm-hmm. We'll have a little sound effect. Ding! And who's he going to call? Go, not Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> not Ghostbusters? No. I don't know who Darren called. He can't really call Gwen. <laughs> he can call Jamie, Jamie, but Jamie's working out right now. Yeah, Jamie, you know, he's kind of indifferent. I'm not sure. <laughs> who he's- are you going to call? Not your sister. Me? Oh, my gosh. She yeah, won't she'll show just up. send you a, wa- a wheelchair or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's good for that. So, so yeah, he has a nightmare about Belko. Yep, Belko's shooting him. Yep. Which I can understand. Yeah, I I think he's I probably going to be traumatized for a while. <laughs> I think it's justified. Yeah, 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 it is. So Sarah and Holder, we'll get onto a more exciting yes storyline. Sarah and Holder are discussing Alexi. Yes. Well, they're convinced it's. I just wrote they're convinced it's the tattoo guy, mm-hmm. which is Alexi. He's the and guy yeah, with the. Yeah, I'm convinced Oogie also. Jim. Right. And, uh, and it all it all adds up. It all makes sense. That it's Alexi, except for the fact that we know it's episode five in the second mm-hmm. season. What you're going to solve it here? Killer. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so here I'm going to set you up here. Set me up. Duncan shows up with coffee. <laughs> Duncan, <laughs> because he's a cop named Duncan. Yeah, and he shows up with coffee. You know, I love that. Yeah, and so. his partner Spunky Dunker. Exactly. <laughs> he's Amy very- Joy. He's married to Amy Joy. And I don't know. Is Amy Joy national or is that know. just a Chicago thing? I don't know, but Amy Joy Donuts is a thing here. I wonder if Spunky Dunkers is national. Spunky, if it's not, it that's should a, be. Anyone that's a crime against up. humanity. If Spunky Dunkers isn't everywhere. <laughs> oh, for some reason, it makes me want to talk about spelunking when I hear about Spunky Dunkers. But what? I don't know why. It just does. Well, I know spelunking. why because you're saying spunky and it makes me I like you say to say spelunking. 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 Yes. yes, I know. So he wants to know what they're doing in their office. And Sarah shuts the door on him and locks it. And Holder has one of my favorite lines. He says, keep that up and they'll think you left Sonoma for me. <laughs> oh, I love Holder. Actually, doesn't Sarah it, is so that where crazy. he also then says, yo, it wouldn't be the first time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's so got the best uh, lines. He does. He's so We need funny. t-shirts. And That's Sarah's safe. a great uh, straight man. She's, yes. And she's crabby. She's got that nice amount of crabbiness and just shutting the door on people. He brought her coffee. They're, they're the new Abbott and Costello. Oh, my gosh. Don't make me say that. I won't. I promise. Because I can't say those two names. This is why I have to call Sarah. I can't say Lin, Lyndon. Right. And, and Holder. Holder. Right. In the same. I can't right. put it together. And, and we want to keep our. Our rating clean, so, so we're not going to say, say Evan. Say because... egg, 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 I can't say. Right, we're not going to have you say what you say for Evan I got Costello. Some, I got some issues with my. Oh yeah, and that's why I'm a podcaster. <laughs> 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 that's what you want to go into is is uh, public speaking, when right? You, when you can't even talk, when you can't say Evan and Costello. Oh, it's. Oh yeah, no bad. explicit rating if that one comes out. Yeah. Good thing we're not showing our daughter that one. Yeah, I have to put it the other way, maybe. Costello Good. and Abbott. Oh, there you See, go. There, I can do that. She, <laughs> she wants to go to Alexi's mom to question her, and Holder reminds her that it's 1 a.m. Right. She's yeah. determined to she, go well, anyway, she just, of course. She is oblivious to anything she doesn't like care. that. Right. She's oblivious to anything but other than her agenda. Right. So Jack calls. And Which is 1 a.m. It's 1 a.m. and Jack's calling. And he's sick. Right. And, okay, here comes one of my favorite. So she's telling him where the cold medicine is, and Holder is yelling out natural remedies. That's my boy! Right, right. 
I am I am a natural remedy guru. And, I love helping everybody heal with natural remedies. Right. So when my holder did that, I was very happy. And he, he tells her that he wants her to go take care of her little of of little man, not her little man, of yes. little man. So officially, Jack is now little, little man. man. Even though we've heard him call him that before, it is now just his name. Yes, he is little man. It's very cute. I'm sure Jack doesn't think it's cute. No, <laughs> a diminutive man. Yeah, no, that doesn't work either. <laughs> diminutive man. I just like that movie. Shut up, little man. Oh, you do. And it makes yeah, me that think documentary. Of it. Yeah, it makes me think of it. Shut up, little man. Yeah, shut up, little man. <laughs> this is an input junkie. We don't talk about documentaries right. on here. But um, I'm thinking about them. I'm thinking about that one. You know, you could get a t-shirt. I wish they had action figures of Shut Up Little Man. Yes, I do. The I best. Agree. Shut up, little Rob. I have, I have a birthday coming up. Uh, in July. Well, it it's takes you a while to get started yeah, on things. So Holder tries to get her to go home to take care of Jack, and she insists on staying and going with Holder. Right. Very upsetting. Right. Well, she's not she, winning mom of the year. She already knows she's not in the running, so why push it? Why do those things if you're not winning? She's very competitive that way. I guess so. Yes. Or self-absorbed. And- oh, well, okay, or that. So Holder and Lyndon then go and they, they talk to Alexi's mom. Mm-hmm. Once again, I, I never know anyone's name. Well, they go to her that, house. I just put, they, they go and talk to Tattoo Boy's mom. Mm-hmm. And Holder is really driving it home on her. He's really well, pushing this. I put Holder as being harsh. <laughs> yeah, I put driving it home. Like, okay, that sounds a little... I know, that's why I changed it, but he is. He is being very harsh. Yes. Uh, he He's not playing around. He's playing bad cop. Yeah, and meanwhile, Sarah is scanning the room and doing her thing. <laughs> right. And, and she finds, uh, she hones in on a partially eaten bowl of cereal right. That that lets her know that there's something going on in that house. That this right. woman didn't just leave a partially eaten bowl of cereal. Right, right. Well, and she calls it. She calls her out on it. She now she plays good cop and she brings down the tone and she's nice to him and she she calls out the fact that he's there. Well, she tries to talk to the mom about lo- what it's like to live with the guilt of knowing that you failed your child. Right. And so she she's trying to play on her sympathies of it, you know, and, and getting her to... You know what would be funny is if somebody asks Sarah that at this point. Well, that's why she's so good at this conversation. Right. Although I'm not sure she really feels guilt. No. Um, but she should. But but I think that she... Um, but she's certainly not taking care of little man. No. Uh, she says that she knows that Alexi is there. And of course, he's a good boy. I know he's a good, you know. Yeah, right, right. Um, uh the woman is saying, you know, he's a good boy. He had nothing to do with what happened to the car- to the Larson girl. Right. And so Holder and, and Sarah convince her, of course, that it's better for them to bring him in. Right, right. So they, they actually then get to search the house. And they, they go into the basement. And there he is. Where every good 20-something-year-old boy is living. Yep. He's in sleeping in the house. basement. Uh, they find him curled up. Yep. Oh, like a little toddler. Yeah. Okay, it's not that cute. No, so, it's kind of gross. Yeah, when it's it's, Twenty something. Uh, so yeah, they now they have Alexi, and once again at this point they're really trying to make us believe that Al- Alexi is the one that did this. But we know so about not it. so cute. Dangled carrot. Dangled. Yeah, hair. I'm sure. I'm sure. So Stan calls and leaves a voicemail for Mitch that he and the boys miss her. <laughs> right. Right, and he says on there. The things I've done, they just won't let me go. Mm. So, I mean, he's... His ghosts. Those are his yeah, ghosts. He's got ghost number two. Yeah. Ba-ding! Did that sound Nailed effect? it. Nailed it. Yeah. So, Stan stops outside of Terry's door. So, Stan stops outside of Terry's door, which I'm not liking where this is going. No, and I have been seeing it coming for a while. Well, I don't. I don't pick up on those kind of things, and I, I don't like it. Like it. Let me just say right here, day 18. Okay. Darren's watching TV. On day 18. He pushes himself out in the hallway and then onto the elevator. Yep. Where does he think he's going? I don't know. He's going somewhere. Yeah. Well, he also, you know what you missed before that was he was watching TV and there was a gunshot on there and post-traumatic stress boy jumped. 
Okay. When that happened. As that's what I. that's what prompted him to get on that elevator and get out of there. He thinks he's leaving. Yeah. I don't know where he thinks he's going or what's going on, but he is getting out of there. But he wasn't dressed, was he? Did no. He still have the no, but that's why he was going. Uh, oh, Darren. Okay. And people just let him on. Well, you're not a prisoner. Um, he I has a wheelchair. Differ. He has mobility. I beg to differ. I don't. I've been in the hospital. They didn't let me just wander. Okay. Well, well that was you. Psychiatric. <laughs> That was you. It was it was for surgery. Once you jimmied out of that straitjacket, they should have let you go wherever <laughs> it you was wanted. For surgery, but but really, I mean, it's not like they let you just go wander off. Are they, where are you going? What are you doing? You know, I mean, nothing. Yeah, but we've also seen what the healthcare was like at this particular hospital. Yeah, that's and true. The uh, doctor feel good, and yeah. you know, they don't care. Nurse ratchet. Nurse ratchet. So Alexi's getting interrogated by Holder. And Holder takes his chair and throws it out in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, he won't want to Because he's Holder. He won't want to sit down. So <laughs> Sarah's defending their work with the boss while Holder's having a tantrum in the other room. Right. Doesn't, doesn't he call him princess, too? Does it, Probably. Does it, oh, I, I think Holder it. called him princess during that. And they showed his tattoos, and those were the worst tattoos. <laughs> this is worse. We have a... Our nephew has... Tattoos that he made himself with, like, with guitar string or something, like a smiley face. I thought those were the worst tattoos I'd ever seen. These are worse than his. These are the worst so tattoos. These are prison tats. What? Alexis? Well, that's what that's what Joe's are supposed to be too. Even though he wasn't, well, he in, wasn't prison. in prison. No, yeah. he was just locked in a room with his brother. That's like being in prison. <laughs> so yeah, these are the worst, man. So Sarah's defending <laughs> their work with the boss. And he says, you have eight hours to hold him, and then you either need to charge him or let him go. Yeah, that's not very long. Right. She says that they have a lot of evidence. They've got prints. They've got all these things. He doesn't care about evidence. No, no. It's it's not solid. Mm -hmm. But once again, they're trying to lead us along the path of thinking they've got something here, and they're about to let him go and screw this up. But you know what? The lieutenant's right. They Mm -hmm. don't have enough to keep this guy. And 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 they don't have enough to convict him for sure. So far. But right. Darren was shot after falsely yeah. being accused by them. Right. And uh, there have been many. Yeah. How many more before that? Belko? We were led Belko's to believe that Belko issue. was involved. Um, I mean, there has been a string. Yeah. And none of them have ended well. Right. Oh, the guy, the teacher who got the beat guy, up. The guy, yeah. Bennett. I mean, none of this has gone. So they're seeing, oh, great, here we go again. Right. Now, now you're going to blame. You're going to have someone beat up or killed right. again. You know, yeah. or shot. Or Ogie June is in trouble here. So Mitch is at the motel, and she sees that runaway girl. Yeah, the Rosie girl. All right. The now, one that looks like Rosie to her. Um. Now we're at. And she's out there. She's out at the pool. The, the Rosie girl's out at the pool, and she's having a fight with some guy. It's obviously like a boyfriend or something. And uh, Mitch is, you know, watching long, like she wants to parent or she oh, wants to Lord. intervene. Why start now? Yeah. What about your kids dummy. that are still there? <laughs> Damn dummy. Damn <laughs> dummy. <laughs> Sometimes that could be such a powerful word. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, Mitch's parents. Oh, Mitch's parents oh, are the worst. They're the no. worst. I just want to punch them. I just want to take all their heads and just three stooge yeah, them. Three, I just want to smack all their heads. Sound? Yeah. Just knock all their heads together. So Mitch's parents cannot understand how Mitch could leave. Guess what? Neither can us. Neither can the audience. Neither can us. Wait, neither can we. Neither can we. Oh, my gosh. It's been a long day. Neither can us. <laughs> the, that mom is oh, the heinous. worst. Which which shows us why ter- why why Mitch is. Well, uh, why Terry Terry's and Mitch are, are screwed up. But Mitch is such a lovely mother based on, you know, yeah. based on her. She's learned from the best. Yes. So Terry... Um, to, tries to defend herself when the mom says, "Look at this place." Yeah, and they don't want the boys to stay there. Guess what? Neither do we. Neither do we. Neither do us. Right. No, I'm kidding. Neither do, neither us. do we. <laughs> and uh, so, of course, Stan defends Terry because, first of all, she has been there. She's helped. She's been, you know, very important for the stability of, you know, in any way of right, this family. Right. But also because there's something. Something Creepy else. Creepy starting to yeah. develop there. Yep. Not a fan. No, no. Uh, then Mitch's mom, the we'll call her the piece of work, asks the Stan. The Yeah, asks Stan why Mitch left him. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
you know what? It's like this guy's world hasn't turned upside down. Why are you throwing salt mm-hmm. in the wounds this way? I mean, yeah, you might want to ask the question, but the, the way she asked it, totally accusing Stan, totally, uh, you know, you caused this. Okay, let's let's just look at the, the just big ridiculous. picture for a second. And he leaves disgusted. Let's just look at the big picture for a second. You're the mother to this girl. Which girl? She, to, to Mitch. She marries a guy who was a mobster. Okay. They have children, and their daughter dies. He's going to prison. For be- so you're def- pre- you're defending the mom in some I'm way. I'm just saying that like, as a parent, you're saying it's justifiable. But you know what? I'm looking at the bigger picture, which is we've seen how this woman is. I'm saying the woman's heinous, but I'm telling she you, she would do the same thing if it was Mitch. Yes, but I'm telling you, on some level, I can see that that this is. Um, I think if Mitch was in the, was a, there and Stan wasn't, she would say, "Why did why Mitch did leave did, you? Why did Stan leave? Yeah, why yeah. did Stan leave? Yeah." I, That'd be no, silly I, to say, why did Mitch leave? Exactly, because Mitch is standing. <laughs> Mitch is the one she's talking to. But, um, but, I, but I'm just you saying. You know how many times I've sung the Ghostbusters theme in my head during this so far? And that's why I'm getting distracted. I totally can't I wish stop. I had a reason for why I'm getting yeah, distracted. Yeah, mine is Ghostbusters. I just have ADD. Oh, so, just kind of an interesting scene. But I do, I mean, I am in no way defending this, this mother because right. she's she's a rather nasty person, but I'm saying as a parent... Yeah, and I can see it from that perspective. But I can that's see not that... what she's doing. But, uh, but right. I'm just saying, for me, personally, like if I pull back and just kind of look at the situation... There's an element of that where you can say, yeah, you know what, I could see that that and would be... And there's an element but of... once again, I think this woman's terrible. And... Yes. And there's an element of her... She has... Terry has not actually functioned in the past. Right. Based on other, right, other right. clues we've gotten. Right. And so she's just looking at this, like, look at the house. The kids are, like, nobody's getting cared for here. Like, nothing's actually working. And if she's in charge, we're all in trouble. Right. It's kind of the right. impression that I'm getting. Now, she's not giving her any credit for actually right. trying. Right. And, and my problem with it is, regardless of all that, they need support at this time. I agree. 100%. And she is not offering any support. All she is is a fly in the ointment. Mm-hmm. Consistently, yes. It doesn't matter who she's talking to; she's going to push their buttons mm-hmm. and push in a bad way for every single person. We haven't heard her do it to the grandkids yet, oh, but I bet she, she says it to oh, them. You know, why'd your mom leave you? Yeah, you know, I bet there's a scene like that. Why didn't you save your sister? Or yeah, something. Yeah, oh, like yeah she's yeah. just. I and I and that's why I'm saying I'm not defending the woman. I'm just saying that. that oh, she's terrible. When you look at the whole situation, it's not like. You know, she's the only one not functioning. I mean, they're all a hot mess. I, I totally get it. So I, I can see it on some level that she would be um, feeling self-righteous. Like, sure. you know, you guys, sure. like, none of you function. Gotcha. So, um, Mitch buys the runaway girl breakfast. Right. Because why not? Right. Um, she tells the girl that she's not married. Yeah. Yeah. This whole thing is, you know. She's a We've said it before. Not my favorite. Her. I. I, I could get through this without without uh, giving much thought to it. Like this whole thing with Mitch. I, I, I Go back to Stan or don't. And let's but just stop be done acting with this story. like you're a troubled 20 year old. I mean, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's really pathetic. It's and, ridiculous. And not in a, I'm a really grieving, oh, sad mother. It's a, it's a, no, you're really right. just pathetic. And, right, and right. Up, I like, would rather see it be like on Breaking Bad when he claimed he had the fugue state. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I'd rather have her have a fugue re- state mm-hmm. and do all this, and then it turns out she doesn't know what she's doing. She's just gone but no. blanked out. Now, on that, he didn't blank out. He used that as he excuse. He faked it, but... But that would be more interesting. She's not that smart. She's not a no, smart character. No, she's not going to come back and say, I have no idea what I did. I was in a mm-hmm. fugue state. <laughs> you no! Know? Oh, now I'm thinking about Walter White. Darn it, I love that show. I do too. I'm right there with you. So she so he you know, she says she's not married and the girl says, Did he beat you? And and Mitch says, No, he was a good man. Oh you know, it, it's just she it's all self serving yeah. for her. Like it's just not yeah. there's there's nothing about her that that I can tolerate at this point. Um so this girl wants to sell Mitch postcards. Right. 
Because she's like homeless and right. she's That's kinda her doing her thing. Idea. Yeah. I would also like to point out that this rosy girl had a nose ring that was creeping me out through the whole scene because it looked like she had a booger in her nose. Have you ever seen those where it mm-hmm. has like the thing and it yeah. kind of sticks out of the nostril? She had one of those and the whole time I hardly heard what was going on because I was fixated on the booger in her nose. I don't think I looked. I didn't notice. I couldn't stop looking. I wrote it down twice on my paper. Huh. Well, now I'm going to have to watch. If I had more time, I would have drawn the booger. That's how obsessed I was with it. And here we are, how much later, talking about the show, and I'm still thinking about what that booger looked like. It wasn't a booger. It was a I I know, but it looked like a booger. So Sarah's trying to relate with Alexi. (laughs) (laughs) She's thinking, okay, I, I'm going to play good cop here. Right. Hold her through a chair. She's good cop again. Yeah. So the last scene, he was bad cop. Oh. And she was good cop. Here we are. Now, Alexi had my favorite. My favorite. I thought this was so hysterical. Okay, because I have a quote that I have to do, too. So go ahead. He says, now that Slim Shady's gone, <laughs> who are you? Slim Shady. <laughs> so... Now we need a Holder t-shirt that says the real Slim Shady underneath it. <laughs> Slim Shady. Oh, my gosh. That was the funniest dang thing. Oh, my gosh. Ever. That was great. Well, the quote I have is actually <laughs> by someone named Martha. What? Uh, when this scene started, she said, oh, God, her sweater. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the sweaters. The sweaters are doing We can't get through an end. episode without you making a comment. <laughs> this one, you just, it's the scene starting. You go, oh, God, her sweater. I, I didn't comment on mine. No, it's funny. I don't remember. Uh, so um, Sarah tells him <laughs> that his mom gave him up. Right. And uh, um, so, yeah, she tries to relate to him talking about being an orphan and everything. Yes. You know, she says, you know, we were orphans. All we could wear were these ugly sweaters. And look, oh, I'm still stuck in them. Shut up. So Rosie, he tells her that Rosie hated her parents. Right. And then he refuses to talk, to talk anymore. So he right. won't give her any details. Right. And this is. This has been a consistent on the show. Yes. Once some lines of communication start to open up, they clam up. Everybody just why, sort why of Why is he clamming up? Why He's talking to her. Why can't he just say something to I her? didn't do it. This is what no, happened. This but is instead, what was. But no, they all just shut up and then they, they look guilty. Right. And then it all snowballs because, of course, and then the next thing you know, there would be no show if Bell they all goes doing the dance and, and stands people, beating people I don't off. Know, and, and, oh my gosh, how many times a day do we go? Why are you looking at me, Stan? Oh my God. I swear, this house, it's its so... That's but the t-shirt we need for this podcast. I swear, that is all we say. We say it to our daughter. We say it all the time. She doesn't you know, know what? what we're talking about. But we sit there and go, <laughs> why, are you, looking at me, why are you looking at me, Stan? Quit looking at me, Stan. Why are you looking at me like that, Stan? When, when we put products on our website, which we are going to do, we're going to get cell phone covers and t-shirts very soon. Why are you looking at me, Stan? That's the one we're going to do for this show. <laughs> We'll do one that's just, why are you looking at me, Stan? Quit looking at me, Stan. Quit looking at me, Stan. <laughs> That'll be it. It is our It favorite. doesn't even have to have an image. It'll just be a cell phone cover that says, quit, quit looking, looking at me, Stan. <laughs> I love that line. I mean, that was just, it had that one more than any line. I know. I, we can't we stop. We can't stop saying it. So funny. <laughs> why are you okay. looking at me, Stan? So that had nothing to do with any of this. Okay. So Sarah goes and asks Holder for a cigarette. Okay. She's done. Right. Alexi has pushed her to the brink. Right. She's, she doesn't want the gum. She She's wants, moving right on. Yeah, she wants Alexi's phone. I picked a heck of a month to give up smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> she tells Holder to keep his mouth shut about checking his phone without a warrant. Right. It's just like, she's just going all she's in. Just, she's just so old. You know what? It. I'm just accusing this guy and you're backing me up. <laughs> and you're going to back and, me up. And you're going to supply me with endless cigarettes during the whole and process. And I am going to just be so illegal that, <laughs> right. you know what, just just don't look. And, d- <laughs> yeah, I'm going to mesmerize you with my sweater. <laughs> She's doing it to I'm you. I'm going to put the whammy on you. Oh, so what? Stan comes to give Sarah <laughs> names. Why are you looking at my sweater, Stan? <laughs> And he sees Alexi, and she gets him to leave without a scene. Do you, you know, know what's sad? Hmm. Every one of my notes here, I just wrote his name as Lexi. Why? Because that's, that's a good I don't know. name. I don't know. And I kept thinking it was weird when I was writing it. So as you're saying Alexi, I, every time I look down here and I say it, I feel a little shame because I'm like, I you like should because it's not he's not a girl. So interesting because he. He sees Alexi and he's he knows this this guy has something. Oh, he yeah, to do he, with 
He well, he knows who he is. Yeah. He also knows that he had involvement with his dad. Mm-hmm. He knows this whole thing is involved here. But he doesn't go in there half cocked and start beating him up. So that's a good thing. Because that could have happened. That stands MO. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's... Why are you beating on me, Stan? <laughs> Okay, can we move on? So, Darren. No, because then we have to go to Darren. Well, we are. Darren talks to a dark-haired woman. Well, he's woman. outside. He, right. he goes all the way yeah, outside. Yeah, he gets outside and he's sitting there, and there's a dark-haired woman, which is his thing. His thing. Other than Gwen, every one of them have had dark hair, mm-hmm. and he starts chatting her I up. think Gwen would have dark hair if she stopped oh, bleaching. Oh, a little catty, huh? No, I'm just saying that... You think it's bleached? I don't think it's natural. All I'm right. not saying bleached, but I'm... It's colored. Okay, I don't know. I have no idea. So I have idea. a feeling that, you know, she probably fits the it's category. Like, it's like uh, Scully I said she had red hair. hair on X-Files, but she doesn't in real life. She right. colored it. But I had no idea. What? And now she's on Hannibal and she's got blonde hair. How do you not know that? And I didn't, I don't, I look at her there and I'm like, is, does she have normally a blonde hair? I really can't tell. I don't know what her hair didn't color Didn't she is. ever read any of the books or anything? <sighs> she had red hair in those books. No. The behind the scenes books, like the no, I what? No. Oh, I read them all. Oh, I, I know you all. did. What color is her hair? It's not red. Is it blonde? Like really blonde? No, because that's what it is on Hannibal. Right. People color. Their I know, hair. but I never. I get fooled every time. The only time I don't get fooled is guys that have that black hair <laughs> that should be gray. Then oh. it's like, it looks like black shoe polish. Remember the that's spray like, on hair? That's like, like the only thing I can recognize. Do you Otherwise, remember those commercials with the spray paint? Yes. They would spray paint their bald spot and, and then be like, see? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not bald anymore. Do you want to know that? You should do that. I you often think, think of it. Do you want me to spray paint No, no. No, I don't. I really don't. Because I do have that bald spot and I don't, I don't really care. It's but, kind of like a, a yarmulke. But when I... <laughs> It's like a, uh, yeah, it looks more like a burn yarmulke, because it's not really s- circular. It's Do you want of... me to shave it? No. So that it's but, like... No, I don't. But <laughs> it would be a yarmulke, and you'd take my ear off with it. Were you wearing a pink bow tie, by the way? That's what you'd say as you put my ear off. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I do think of that spray on hair, though, when I get my hair cut, even though I would never do it. I don't really care. I just don't. Apparently you do. You no, no, no. I think about that. I don't think I want it. I think. Oh yeah, there's that spray on hair stuff. Not that I'd want I it. I can't though. even. I can't even imagine what that would look like in person. Well, in person, I don't know. It's got to look like the weirdest skin because there's no hair sticking off of it. Right. It's just your scalp. Remember, is painted. remember when we saw that? There was a documentary called "Comb Over the Movie." Do you remember seeing that? We're not supposed to be talking about and the guy. The guy walked around it like a fair. And at like different parks, and he just filmed people's amazing comb overs. <laughs> he just walked behind him, but he was really into it. He like, like that is really amazing how you did that. That's like the one on the news this morning, and the and the newscaster goes, he's kind of got a bang thing going on. Yeah, there. right. His comb over was brushed forward. It was brushed forward and went way but down. It was just his strands, eyebrows. like five strands yeah, across bizarre. his forehead. It was awesome. I thought it was like a guy that that was trying to hide the fact he was bald, and then wore like a, a like a knit hat for too long and got really sweaty. I don't think and so. And it pushed it down, but I think that was the style. It was just strands of greasy pieces. You know what the, you know what a head. Caesar cut is? Yeah. So I'm thinking that's like the white trash version, version of a Caesar cut. Yeah. I just thought it was funny that the newscaster was like, it's almost bangs. Like yeah. he was going for bangs there. Um, <laughs> Comb over bangs. Yeah, it was. Are so, we doing a podcast about the killing? Where are Sarah we? Sarah and Holder are listening to a voicemail from Ro- Well, we didn't talk about. Do we have to talk about Darren outside? So it's some chick, and she offers yeah, him and, a cigarette, right? And, yada, and yada. then she goes inside, and he looks forlorn. Okay, because of course he he keeps seeing that this isn't the world. I don't exist in that world anymore. That these women are going to fall all over. Right, me. right. So Sarah and Holder are listening to a voicemail from Rosie, and they play it for Alexi. He said he called her back, but she didn't answer. And he waited at the ferry, but she never came back. Well, and she says on this thing, I saw him again. Yeah, and she was scared. Yeah, she was she scared. She was scared of someone, but Alexi won't say who. Right, and I want to hear, who's she talking about? And then the lawyer gets him out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So Holder and Sarah follow him. Now, this was a big piece of evidence here. And where did he and, go? And you know what? It's not Alexi. He went to Yannick. We were saying we didn't think it was, but this, that That scene, Yannick is such right a there. dirty, rotten... 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he works for Yannick, and Beast. Yannick is involved. Some way, somehow, he's involved. Oh, he's involved. involved in many ways. I don't... He's got his, he's got all kinds of trouble going right. on over there. Oh, yeah. This guy's a real problem. Kids, don't get involved with guys like Yannick. That's the moral here. Terry and her father are having a little heart-to-heart talk. Yes. And he he says he doesn't like that she's living there with Stan. Guess what? Neither do I. Right. I'm right there with you, big man. Right. I'm not a fan either. Not little man. He asks about her married boyfriend because, you know, that's what you want to have is this conversation of your friend. Right. And he says, I just wish you didn't have to be alone. Okay, sir. Do you understand what has pushed your daughter into no. being in dysfunctional relationships? No. Because you've gotten her so twisted up about right. being alone that, that it has something to do with her value? Right. Right. Oh, my gosh. What? A, I, I just want to... And the to, thing is, he oh is God. the better of the two, but... He is, but my God, It's all messed up. I mean, they have such daddy issues, these oh. women, and their mother is just a... They have mommy issues, daddy issues. So, so Mitch, we're back, meanwhile, back with the Mitch. Yeah. Uh, Mitch so Mitch is with girl. that runaway Rosie again. They're still at the restaurant, and guess what? It, it couldn't get any better for me. She's singing. Oh. And this is just oh. fantastic. Oh, it's lame. So she asks how old Mitch's kid is. Right. And she says, you left the kid and the hubs cold. Yeah, And yeah. Mitch says, she left. Yeah, she... So because okay. she, because she died, she was brutally murdered. You have the right then to to just leave everybody else and right. just throw away right your family. Right. And yeah, you don't want to tell her about Rosie and what happened and everything. I get that, but this is just this is just this a is whole just big nasty. ball. Of yeah, I, I okay. Can we Off, move on? Move it. Okay, so you Jamie, got to move it, move it. Jamie meets. I'm so amused. Jamie meets his old girlfriend at the park. Yep. And she works at the DA office. Um, care to take it at that point? That's all I wrote because I was starting to lose interest because yeah. of the Mitch thing. And I don't really care about this one either. Well, um, he says, is the DA still taking heat because the charges were dropped against Darren? And she says, what do you want, Jamie? You know, because yeah. clearly he's not there to check on her or to do anything. He just, right, right. He, he's looking for something. So Sarah talked to Jack to see how he was doing because you know what? That's. That's the same as going home and caring for your child. Um, <laughs> she said she'd be home soon, which means sometime in the next three weeks. All right, I'll, sometime and... I'll shove a TV dinner under the door for All you right. once in a while. I'll give you I some change in. for the... Uh, I'm not going to see you. I'm going to put it outside the door. Some change yeah. for the vending machine. And um, uh, drink some tequila. That'll knock out any... Uh, I showed you how to shoot. Showed you how to shoot paintball. Love you. Mm-hmm. Little man. So little man's. <laughs> hold it. Why doesn't he call them little man's like moms? So Sarah talked to Jack to see how he was doing because that's the equivalent, right? Of actually check in. of actually taking care of your child. Right. It's long distance parenting, even so, though you're in the same city. And, you know, I'll be. You know, I, she said she'd be home soon, and, call and, it, which yeah. could mean you know any time in the next three weeks. And I, at some point, I might shove a TV dinner under the door or something. <laughs> right. Throw some change at you from the street as I drive by. So she's chatting There's with a vending machine. And Holder tries to get her, give her a smoke. Right. And uh, he asks her how Jack is. Well, yeah, because he's buddying up with her now. Oh, he's yeah. Trying. You're, you're smoking with me. You he's come to trying. the dark side. So um, she says he's better. And, and um, you know, that probably trying to get out of school. Right, right. And he, Holder tells her she needs to go to him. Um, yeah. Well, he said he would stake out Alexi alone, go see Jack. Right, right. He says he'll keep an eye on I him. I mean, he does not understand this parenting, lack no. of parenting. No. That well, think about how he is with his nephew. He would do anything to be there with the nephew. Yes. So, the fa- he, he would probably do anything to be there with Jack, Yes, too. he would. I agree. So... Yeah, so it doesn't he's make just sense. not. This isn't computing for him. So, but she, he does convince her. Mm-hmm. So she goes into the motel, and and guess who's there? The dad is sitting there. Nightmare. Yeah. Jack had a fever of one hundred and three. One hundred and three. Okay. Now keep in mind a hundred a uh, a fever like that in a child is not the same as a fever like that in an adult. Their kids get high fevers. At, at a lot what of times. age does that change? I mean, the kid's like fifteen. No, he's a kid. 
No. He's like 13. No, he's like 15. No, he's 13. No. I bet you a million dollars. You know what? If you had a million dollars. If I had a million dollars. I would take that bet and then renege on my million if, if uh, I, I was I bet wrong. Jack was 13. Okay. Okay. I want to bet you right now. Nope. We're shaking. Shaking up. Those are just the tremors from all the coffee. I don't drink coffee. No, I meant mine. Oh. Um, he was calling him confused. You know, he was calling the dad confused. Right. And he said, you care more about that dead girl than you do about our son. Agreed. Well, okay. Once again, we're only getting a glimpse into this. Mm -hmm. If, if you take it at face value, then yeah, he's, he's right. Um, and, and he is in accusing here, but I am, I have this impression that he was really crappy as a dad for a long time and for whatever reason is involved right now. I don't know if he has the right to be judgmental about this. Even though what he's saying, you go, yeah, you do. But you know what? If you knew what happened before this with this guy, you might have a different feeling about it. You might say, yeah, you're right in calling her out on this, but, yeah. but you know what? This guy has an agenda. Yes. And he was, he was sitting in the dark when she mm. came in. Which was creepy. Mm -hmm. She has obviously been traumatized by something in the past. Yes. Ghosts. If not multiple ghosts things. Ghosts of the past. So he's her ghost. And he knows that, yet he plays on those fears by sitting in the dark and spooking her when she comes mm -hmm. in. Uh, yes, he's right that she should be there, that Jack should not be alone. Absolutely. But at the same time, I think that he wasn't there for the 800 other times that Jack was sick and needed something. How does he know she was? We don't know. Right. How do we know she was? She so is this, has this been his has whole this childhood? Been the pattern? Right, right. It might be. But, but why wasn't the dad child involved until deserves now? I don't, I don't. I, I agree. If you look at it from that perspective, I totally agree. I'm just saying there might be more to this dad and what's going I'm on here. I'm not saying there's not. I think that the dad is a shyster. There's, there's well, a lot going on there. The other thing is, at the end of this scene, she she threatens to call the cops, and then she does. She picks it up and starts calling it in, and he hightails it out of there. Mm -hmm. She must have a restraining order against this guy. We or thought that something. before. Or he has a warrant or, or there's, there's something. No, no, I'm thinking it's a restraining order. Because I think when he was at the police station and she freaked out, I think it's because, and we said that back then, we thought that maybe mm -hmm. there was something like that. I think that's what's happened here. If If he gets caught, he's in big trouble. So... Once again, we don't know his story. We're seeing it from a very distinct perspective here. His story doesn't matter in the context of I this story. All that matters in the context of this story is that this child is very I totally, sick. I totally and agree. And should never be. When I'm an adult and I am that sick, leaving a, a, me alone like it's a horrible feeling you just need somebody to bring you some broth why are you looking at me martha some, yeah exactly why are you looking at me martha you take care of me quit martha. looking at me martha <laughs> so the bottom line is regardless of what this man has done in the past or who he is or what that it doesn't right right change the fact that right. he From needs this to be parented and when you're that sick all you need, you need round the clock care. You, right. you cannot leave. Right, right, right. A child and, alone. And she's leaving him without eating and whatever. Yeah, exactly. I totally he has get no that. nutrition. He has no, and if his fever is that high and the fact that he's calling the dad and not calling her and, and is, was she call, was he calling her and she wasn't answering? That's or possible. What, because she's done that before. Right. So. Well, did he call the dad or did the dad happen to call him and Jack told him? He said he he was calling me and he was confused. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I I'm not defending him at all. I I, I think that the dad is sh is shady, I think that, right? But he's doing the right thing there. In this I just, particular I'm just situation, I'm interested to see how. Now, this is a storyline that I am interested. I am in so interested. Unfolds. Yeah, because I think there's a lot more there than we're getting told. So Holder gets in his car, and there's someone in the back seat. Yeah. Uh. It's Alexia, and he's ready to talk. This is good. This is the kind of thing we're waiting for. Why are I, they I always awesome. in the back seat? Well, if if they're in the front seat, uh, he's trying to hide. It's not that he's hiding from Holder. He's trying to hide. He doesn't want anyone seeing him with Holder. If he's sitting in the front seat, it looks like he's talking to Holder. It just is creepy. 
I'm not I'm not liking the whole That's all you hit under the, the car. Vaccine. Grabbing ankles. Oh as my gosh. Walk by. That that's what they told me when I was in college that that you should stand a, a certain amount of distance from the car door because people were slashing people's But did that yeah. happen? Oh my no, but it terrorized. <laughs> right. Me. But did that that's one of those urban and legends that, that you hear. And I I never go to my car without checking the back. See, how are these people? How's a cop? Just what did he get in his in his front seat, and not noticing a giant boy in the back seat, like a giant boy. I mean, really, it's not like he, they're not leprechauns in the back seat. They're not little fairy. <laughs> like it's a it's a the, grown man. How do you not see a giant boy? But how do you not see? I don't know. You're trained as a cop. You're supposed to be aware of your uh, surroundings. Right. You're observant. Right. But he's also but, a holder. And, and it's not just this show. It happens all the time. They just get in the car and then all someone's got a gun on them. And the, they think, what, how do you not know to look in the back seat as you're walking by? <laughs> That'd be my first thing. I don't understand. You know what? I'm going to be the best cop ever because I'm never going to get caught by a guy sitting in my back seat. I'm going to look. <laughs> there is a giant boy in my back seat. <laughs> I am not getting in. It's Tattoo Boy. <laughs> Why are you in my back seat? I'm not getting in. <laughs> Is your name Lexi or Alexi? In my notes, I wrote Lexi. So, okay, Darren is in the bathroom crying. I thought Darren was in the back seat crying. Let's, let's talk about him crying. He's he's emoting. Right. Jamie comes in and is uncomfortable because that's Jamie. Right. But he he does try to help. Jamie, we're all uncomfortable. <laughs> he does try to help. But you know what? This is also a situation where... Darren might need a bedpan or something. I, he it's might very sad. On him. There's it's things that I, sad. but I could not handle that either. So I'm not, get, I'm not down with that. Jamie gets him back in bed and he's, he's very kind. And Jamie tells him about his grandfather's accident. He lost everything and got it all back. Right. When he decided to fight. And Jamie tells him that Adams framed him. Right, right. And he says, you still want to throw in the towel? And Darren says, I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to destroy him. After I stop weeping yeah. in the bathroom, <laughs> alone in the bathroom. So, I, you know, I Somebody thought get it, this pin out of my leg. This was actually a very nice scene. Somebody I thought put the it pin was, in his leg. Yeah, that was, I don't like to talk about that. Why you make me talk about that, Sam? <laughs> so, he, so <laughs> I, I really did like this scene because it's, we're finally going to get out yeah, of weepy feeling Darren self, and, you know, self, yeah. self um, well, I don't think that's really, I mean, yeah, it's only been a few days, so I get it, but I also yeah, don't I know, think that's enough. necessarily in Darren's <laughs> character. Cause if you watched him through the first season, he, he seemed to just be driven yes. and above this kind of thing. And yeah, this would be a setback and yes, it's going to be traumatizing and everything. But he's always but, crying over girls. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just a little gross. Like, I, I don't know. I, I but anyway, I I did like the scene. And this I, was more I, what I, I liked expect of Darren, Jamie, in this scene. I really liked that he told the story. I like the story. I well, like Jamie's that not would, a bad guy. Jamie, no, is, Jamie's a nice guy. He's, Jamie he's is little, like we've said. He's about the only one that's been forthright through this series that hasn't been shady, even though we thought he was. But that was because he was playing a role for Darren right. to get to Adams. Um, yes, he couldn't take it and he went and hid, you know, at the moment when Darren needed him most to find out that he couldn't walk or whatever. Okay. You know what? So he's not a saint. Yeah. But Jamie is a, is one of the few, like, he's a loyal guy. Characters. Yeah. He's a good guy. And he's there and he's still trying to get Darren to fight. Now, if we fight. find out that Jamie killed Rosie. Oh my God. After all this, I'm going to be so freaking mad. That would be the worst. I'm just going to be so mad. You know what? I would have to just not watch the rest of that episode and move right on to the next season. And then I'd have to go back and watch the rest of that episode. Yeah. So Sarah's, I would be very disappointed in the show if it turned out at this point to be, be Jamie. That would be pretty funny. So Sarah's like looking. The one through, decent character. Is looking through artwork in the motel room. She <laughs> hears a noise in the hallway. Nothing's there. Because, of course. I, I, you know what? If you hear a noise in a hallway and you're in a locked room, don't go out in the hallway. You don't go out in the oh, hallway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you never seen a horror movie? You stay in the locked room. This was... You don't need to know what's going on out there. Now, granted, she's a cop, but still. But still, this is scary stuff. It is. And and so someone broke the light 
and then yeah. turned off all the lights. Right. The lights went off. Oh, Bonk. freaking heck. Okay. Yeah. That's why you don't go. If I had stayed in my motel room, but I wouldn't know. have known somebody did you that. You know and I would have that light bulb my... was broken by somebody that that's trouble. Yeah. I mean, if you saw Godfather 2, he breaks the light bulb and then shoots the guy when he comes out. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Same thing. And and in these moments, I this is when I think of that her ex. Right. A lot of times I he... think, ooh, that guy. You know, yeah. like I wouldn't put it past him right, that he's crossed, to be terrorizing. He's crossing her. a line somehow. Just yeah. to just That's to why scare I said her. we don't know. No, and, and so I, I wasn't defending him in the right. other scene. What I was saying is in that particular scene, the issue is her not caring for her right. child. I don't care who is the one bringing it up. Right. If it was the I gotcha. The I, I gotcha. Girl but you can see how Walgreens. he's. He, there's something more to this guy. Okay. So anyway, the the lights go out. She runs in. She locks the door, and there's a knock, mm-hmm. which is terrifying. Yep. I'd be freaking out if I knew someone was smashed the light and then oh, turned yeah. the lights out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now there's this knock at the door. Oh, it's terrifying. Oh, there'd be no way I would open it. But she does, of course, because she's there and she's and tougher than me. And it's Holder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this was real suspicious, though, too, because why, who did the light thing? Why is the light going out? And then it's Holder. You know. Holder would not. I know. I know he wouldn't. And I know that that wasn't, it was just supposed to set you off a little bit. But what I was wondering is, did he see anybody? How did all this happen without his knowledge? Mm -hmm. So this was really weird. But I don't, I really don't think that there was anything with Holder. Mm -mm. I think that whoever was messing around saw Holder walking in and, and, Ducked. Yeah. So it was really lucky that it was Holder. Um, well, and so you he, also don't know if they turned the lights out from in there. There might be a different area where you turn the lights out. Right, right, right. If they smashed it and ran and then turned the lights out in a different part of the building, he wouldn't have seen them. Right. Well, they might have broken it. They might have just been trying to scare her. Right. And But when he came in there, they're not going to continue scaring her. She's going to get the heck out of there. So he, he tells her that he's got Alexi in the car. And that he wants to talk. He's right. ready to talk. Right. So Sarah's just on this nice roller coaster right yes. now between Jack, the the person terrorizing her, and Alexi. So he's she's going to leave Jack yet again. Yes. So Stan is talking. He's nice cooled up. So no, I, I'm just I came and talked about it. Moms of the year. So Stan is talking to his lawyer, and he says he's looking at three to five years. Right. So this is not what well, he says. Going well. That's. The best we're going to get. And, but and, he says it like it's a good thing. Like, hey, you're not getting, you know, 20 years. Well, he deserved a lot yeah, for what he did. Yeah, you're getting three to five I mean, years. And so. he actually deserved life in prison a long time ago for murdering uh, yes. other people. So, yes. um, you know, but but now you think, what about these kids? Because is Mitch ever going to be able to function? Someone's thinking about these kids? Yeah, I apparently I know Terry we're the is. only ones. Yeah. Um, I think Stan is too, actually. I, he's trying to. Right. Mm-hmm. Alexi was going to kill Stan. Yeah, so this is the story he tells. He he tells how that was his plan, and uh, he stalked him until he met Rosie. Right, and that's when things changed. Uh, he also says, well, and we know he wanted to kill Stan because Stan killed his father. Right, right, yeah. Well, yeah, all the cards are flipped over here at this point about Alexi. We know that Alexi didn't do this. We know that he was essentially trying to help out Rosie or was there for her, even though I think it started out a little bit weird. I think Rosie was creeped out by him at first because, really, he was stalking because he wanted to kill her dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then I think that it turned into something else. Yes. Not that it was like some love affair or anything like that. No, but they became friends. It was more like they became friends. friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said she was scared of a black town car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he couldn't see who was inside. He couldn't see who was inside. And. Town car, here it is again. Mm-hmm. What, what the heck? If, if he was seeing this town car other times, mm-hmm. that means whoever it was had regular access to this town car. So all that speculation that we had that, okay, well, they used it for the night yeah, or it could it was have a just favor. Been one person, but no, if no, this is somebody, somebody using this car. Mm-hmm. Who has access to this car that would be using it this I'm way? I'll find out, I hope. So Stan goes to Terry, of course. It is wrong on so many levels. Oh, yeah. Stan goes to Terry's room. 
I don't he, even he want to talk resist. about it. He can't resist. I wrote blah with a big yucky I face. I don't want to talk about it. The phone rings, and it says private. Yes. Well, no, we have to talk about it. They kiss. And that's when the phone starts ringing, and they stop immediately. She starts crying, and on the phone it says private. Mm-hmm. And he gets out of there. That's, that's okay. it. Okay. So Alexis, I couldn't believe it. I mean, you kept it. saying it was going to happen. I just kept denying it because to me, it's like, what are you doing? It's it's not messed up enough. Let's yeah. just add. Let's make now it worse. Her sister to the mix, right? So Alexi says he never knew a girl who had so many secrets when he was talking about Rosie. Yes, and he says that that uh, that Rosie had found out about her dad. Mm-hmm. Now, what does that mean? Was it just that he had been involved in the the mob? The mob thing, yeah. Was it... What was it? Well, we know. We find out. Mitch is waiting at the restaurant. Yeah, we don't find out until the last second. The girl gets in the car, gets in a car, and, and Mitch is watching her. Right. Because I think they were going to eat together or something. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So then Terry gets in a car, and it, she's doing a Beausoleil. Right, I put hooking. Oh dear Lord! I <laughs> but just can't you know, she got well. You know, you know, you know what it was. It was. It, it wasn't a Beausoleil. It was. I think it's that politician. Yeah, it was the guy from it the said funeral. Private on her phone. Yep, the it's one who she guy. kept calling, and then the and then the he said, "Stop calling me." Yes, and whatever. So she gets dressed up to go out with him because she's trying to escape the reality that Stan just kissed her and all the other stuff mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. And then that we Alexi find out. Says that Stan. She found out that Stan wasn't her real isn't father. Isn't her real father? Ah! Oh my gosh! What a cliffhanger! Bam! It ends. Yep. Fantastic. Oh that made my up for gosh. that made up for all the Mitch. Oh yeah. Crap and oh yeah. Et cetera, well, this whatever. was one of those. Once again, was this good. was this was kind of one of those transition episodes. Yeah. You know, because now we've got Darren back. Everything we got set up. We've got Darren back in the driver's seat, and he's going yes. to... We know that Alexi's not the guy. Him. We know that, you know, like, like things moved forward here, yes. even though they were strange. I'm glad they didn't string on all this Alexi thing. Right, right. It was... He was a means to an end. Now we know about Stan. Mm-hmm. Now... Now they got to go back to Stan. they got to figure this they gotta out. they got to go... Because why didn't Stan ever tell? Right, right. There's a whole Although, lot. is there... You know what? It Really, did he need to? Does he need to say to Holder Linden, I'm not her biological dad. I know you're doing an investigation into her murder. I'm not her biological dad. What does that matter? We're about to find out. Well, I think we are. But I I don't think that that would be something that normally would come out. He says he's her dad. He's her dad. End of story. But he's not. Well, he is. He raised her. He's not her biological dad. Right. But he raised her, and he views himself as her dad 100%. So this is... This is funky. Something funky. All right, let's There's wrap it up. There's a whole lot going on here. So you can hear past episodes of The Killing Podcast at our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Please find us on, on uh, Facebook and join in the conversation there. Uh, you can also email us at southgatemediagroup at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on Instagram now. We have a The Killing Podcast on Instagram, which is a lot of fun. That we've been having just a blast with. Uh, Twitter, The Killing Pod, and also at R Southgate. And Martha, you also tweet from our SMG from the South, Pods. From the Southgate Media Group one, SMG Pods. So those are all different Twitter accounts you can follow us at. And we do a lot of updates about this podcast, about things we find about the show. We've been trying to find out information about season four. Any any pictures or details? We're putting those on. Uh, I say that's it. Find us on iTunes. Find us on Stitcher. Find us wherever you can find us. Rate us. Review us. We really appreciate it, and it helps people find us that are into this as well as you are, or as much as you are. <laughs> Where does it? We need the grammar police. Today. That's right. We need something. All right. Or sleep. <laughs> sleep might be the answer too. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. For The Killing Podcast, I'm Rob Southgate. And I'm Martha Southgate. I doubt it, but maybe next time we will find out who did kill Rosie Larson. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the Donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or 
well, as much as you want. <laughs> Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world. <laughs>